Okay, so here we are at the Guslan Powhatan Master Gardener's Pollinator Garden, and, and this particular garden right here is our meadow garden where we have almost all native plants. You'll see a few things that shouldn't be here, but mostly we have all native plants here. We're experimenting with green mulch, that is ground covers, plants that cover the ground so that we don't have to put down chopped up wood for mulch. And the first one we're experimenting with here is pussy toes. Now you can see there's quite a patch of pussy toes there. We started in the fall with um, three plants and it is now spreading and you can see here that things still grow, the taller things still grow while the pussy toes cover the ground. And so that is our first experimental area with ground cover. Let me show you another one. So let's move on over here to another one. There aren't quite as many of these yet, but we're getting them started. Down here on the ground, we have lyre sage. Now this, this needs to be trimmed a little bit right now, but all of these little rosettes are the main plant. It reseeds itself very nicely, and there should be maybe a dozen of them around here next season. We'll see. And over here, we have the ground cover that is just exploding all over the place. Last spring, we planted in among these um, uh, milkweeds, we planted three strawberry, wild strawberry, wild Virginia strawberry, uh, Fragaria virginica, and we planted three of them. And look at it. They're growing more than halfway to the other side right now. So next spring, when we do our cleanup, we're gonna have to really get in here and thin these out a bit or maybe we'll just let the strawberries take over as our primary ground cover and just plant in among them because they really do leave a lot of spaces for other things to grow and they're happy to grow around things. So far, I've not seen one climb up anything. So they may be our favorite ground cover. Today, we'll be showing you how to make the Judam Microbial Soil Solution. This is a recipe that was made by Yong Seng Chao, who is the founder of Judam Organic Farming in South Korea. First, we will introduce the sea salt. Next, you will take your potato that has already been boiled, just like you would making potato salad, and you would put it in a paint strainer. Once in the paint strainer, you would go ahead and mash up the potato. Once the potato is mashed up, you would go ahead and add the leaf mold soil. Once the leaf mold soil has been combined with the potato inside a paint straining bag, you would adhere it to a stick and lower it into the water that already has your salt solution in it. The importance of the potato is the potato acts as feed for the microbes that are already in your soil. It is interesting to know that one gram of leaf mold soil contains between two and 10 billion microbes in it. Now we have our finished product. So now we are ready to go ahead and apply this. This will be applied 10 to one ratio with water. For a small scale operation, we will use five tablespoons per gallon of water and apply it as a soil dredge. This should be done within three to four hours of the final product being complete. This is one of the beds in my vegetable garden. And this bed has been established for about 10 years. We have not tilled this at all. Basically what we've done is through not walking on the bed and only walking in the paths and then adding a layer of compost and mulch every year. It's allowed the bed to be raised. 
But one of the things when you have an established bed like this is how do you introduce aeration? So I have been using a broad fork for that. And what this is, just a tool that you can purchase. And when you step in the broad fork, it goes easily down into the soil and you just rock it back and forth. You'll see that the soil structure is actually not moved at all. It's also not um, bothering any of the organisms or the microorganisms that are down in the soil. You'll pull it out, move it about six to eight inches forward, step on it again, and then just rock it back and forth. None of the layers of the soil are actually disturbed, but you do have um, the openings for aeration for water to come in to the soil. What we do then is on top, we'll just add another layer of, of uh, compost and rake it all out. And then this bed will be ready to plant okra for the summer.